How's it going? I'm about to go in and meet with my CPA and go over my taxes for the year. Not too excited about it, but it's what you gotta do. So listen, if you're flipping houses where you own the property less than a year with federal tax and FICA tax and possible city and state taxes, you could be paying between 33 to 60% in combined taxes. Now, luckily there are some strategies for flippers to lower their tax liability because remember, it doesn't matter how much you make, it matters how much you keep. So on today's video, I'm gonna share with you five tax saving tips for real estate investors who are flipping houses coming up. Hi, it's Jerry Norton, the nation's leading expert on flipping houses. And if you're new here and you want to make more money and less time flipping houses so you can live your dream life, subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. Okay, quick disclaimer here, I'm not a CPA or an accountant and what I share should not be considered tax saving financial or legal advice. Always seek competent tax and legal advisors before investing in real estate. Now as a quick review, if you flip a house in less than 12 months, the IRS considers that a short term capital gain and you're taxed at a higher percentage. If you own the property for more than 12 months, then that falls under a long-term investment and is taxed at a lower amount. So for a more comprehensive look at exactly how the income flipping houses is classified based on the different tax brackets, I put a link in the description box below and you can watch a video about that later. Now the point of this video is you're going to be paying taxes on your profits flipping houses, which is why it's so important to do everything you can to minimize your tax liability. So let's review five tips to help you. So tip number one is to maximize your deduction. The IRS tax code allows you to deduct legitimate business expenses, lowering your taxable income. The allowable deductions are many and they vary. For example, you can deduct part of your rent or mortgage payment for your home office, part of your utility bills, uh, plus your home office supplies and equipment. You can also deduct for travel, meals, even education, which means you could come to my two-day live training as a business write-off, link in the description. The key is keeping meticulous record. One suggestion to help you do that is to create a separate dedicated business checking account and credit card used solely for your real estate business, and that's to avoid commingling funds with your personal expenses. This makes it so much easier for your bookkeeper to track and for your CPA to file taxes. For years, even when I was doing 50 plus deals a year, I had a local freelance bookkeeper meet at my home office once a week for a few hours to update my accounting. I use QuickBooks and reconcile my bank accounts. Throughout the week, I kept copies of checks and receipts in a folder, and then I would hand that to my bookkeeper when she came in once a week. Now, one of the things that I love so much about real estate is no matter where you go, even on vacation with my family, there is real estate, right? So I make it a habit no matter where I go to look at real estate and that allows me to write off a portion of my trip. Now, tip number two is to never pay contractors cash or under the table. Now, this is a common mistake that many real estate investors and especially fix and flippers make, thinking that they're saving money. The idea is that a contractor will give you a discount, say 10%, if you agree not to report the income to the IRS. Well, by doing that, you can't write it off as an expense. So really, you're negating any savings by increasing your taxable income. For example, let's say that you paid a contractor $20,000 under the table to save 10% or $2,000. And let's say that you flip the house and you make a $30,000 profit. Since you can't report the $20,000 paid to the contractor as an expense, you effectively would show that you made a $50,000 profit and pay tax on $50,000 not 30,000. More than likely, you're gonna pay much more in tax than the 10% savings, especially if the additional income bumps you to a higher tax bracket. And in case you didn't know, the IRS requires that you get a form called a W-9 from contractors and vendors, and then at the end of the year, you have to send a form called a 1099 to the IRS, which reports the total amount you paid the contractor. It's the IRS's way of keeping you honest because you can't expense a payment if you don't report it, and it keeps the contractor honest because the IRS knows that they received that payment as taxable income. Now, a quick tip here, get a W-9 from your contractors before issuing their first draw for work. One year I was really lazy about getting W-9s from contractors and it was a nightmare at the end of the year to try to collect them from contractors months later after the fact. Now tip number three is to do flips that take longer than 12 months. Like I mentioned earlier, after owning a property for more than 12 months, the profit is taxed as a long-term capital gain and the tax is significantly less, like 15 to 20% less. Now you probably wouldn't wanna take a six month flip and stretch it out to over 12 months to save on taxes. And that's because of all of the holding costs, including interest payments and insurance, property taxes, etc. Some investors lease the property for a year and then they flip it, but that has some risks 
such as the tenant causing damage to the property or the market value going down. Personally, I'm not a big fan of rentals. A better option is to do higher end flips and new construction. My multi-million dollar new construction projects take 12 to 18 months usually, and in addition to paying less in taxes, those deals make six figures per deal. Watch this video to learn why you should be flipping luxury homes. Tip number four is to do a 1031 exchange. If you didn't know, the IRS section 1030 allows investors to make a like-kind exchange in order to defer paying taxes. That means you can take the profits from a flip and roll those profits to another flip and defer paying any tax. For example, let's say that you do a flip and you make a $25,000 profit and you identify a new deal that costs $100,000 to buy. You could do a 1031 exchange and use the $25,000 profit as the down payment for the purchase and defer paying any tax on the $25,000 profit that year. Tip number five is to live in the home you're going to flip. Now, if you do it right, you can pay zero taxes. The IRS tax code states that if you live in a property for at least two out of the last five years, the IRS does not charge any capital gain tax on profits up to 250,000 for individuals and 500,000 for married couples. Now, I'm not a big fan of this strategy because it's not scalable. You won't be flipping very many houses if you have to wait two years between each one. And bonus tip number six is to have a good CPA who understands real estate and actually strategizes with you to lower your tax liability. That is exactly what my CPA does. What I love about him is all he does is real estate investors and he can help you strategize on ways to pay less in taxes. If you'd like to contact him to help you, I'll share his contact info below in the description. Just tell him Jerry Norton sent you and he'll take good care of you. Now, if you learned something on this video, show some love, hit that like button and leave a comment. Let me know your biggest takeaway from this video. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm dedicated to helping you make more money and less time flipping houses so you can live your dream life. And finally, the last thing you want is an IRS audit. Ask me how I know. So if you're dealing with contractors, watch this next video where I share the three most important documents that you need to get every time from your contractors. Watch that now and I'll see you on the next video. And I'm gonna go in and see how much I have to pay in taxes.